hello! I didn't see you there. Yes, it's not time for Mod Madness this week because I'm going to be showing you how to install mods. Mainly because this week I am on holiday. If you couldn't see by the lovely background behind me, I'm actually not at home. So I can't make videos, but I made this before I left. So you've got something to watch this Tuesday and for every other Tuesday for the foreseeable future. But anyway, as per request and because I can't make a Mod Madness, here's how to install mods. Okay, this is very straightforward and simple, so it'll be a very quick video. You're going to start with link number one in the description, which is the AnimeGameMods.net thread for Tools by Eternity. What you want to do is click here for this thread on the mod installer. And here you will see that Flex SDK and Java and stuff not logged need. All you need to do is click here for the download link for the latest version of the Xenoverse installer. So download that one. While we're waiting for that, we will go to the second part of this, which is the ZV2 patcher, or Xenoverse 2 patcher. And this will be obviously out of date when new DLC comes out, so it will take him maybe a week, maybe longer, maybe a little less to update the patcher, but, you know. So, when our Xenoverse installer pops up, we will save it. So when it comes to the Xenoverse installer, I've already got this here, but I'll replace it anyway, I like to just put it in the top level of the directory of where my Xenoverse 2 game is, usually in whichever hard drive you have it installed on games, Steam apps, common, Xenoverse 2, stick it in here. Now moving on to the patcher. So you need the patcher as well, and that would be a lot easier to download, it's much smaller, and save that. And I also put this in the top level of my game directory, I already have it, but you know, that's fine. So now from here, all you want to do is open up whichever one first, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to open up the Xenoverse 2 patcher. All you've got to do is click and drag all of these into the top level of your game directory. I'm going to replace them all, but that's not going to harm me. But they're already there. Cool, so that's done. Next we're going to move on to Xenoverse Inns. So from here, oh, oh, so exactly the same thing there, just drag them all in and you will end up with something like this. When I start my ZV ins, I've got all of my mods installed here, but you won't see this when you start. So for the sake of you, oh dear, oh no, I don't want to do it, oh dear, no, oh that's going to take a while. <laughs> okay, so this is what you should see when you first load up ZV ins. It will say game path and then you'll click this and then just go to bin dbzv2 and open and OK and then it will come up with where well it should come up with the installer for the mods so the second website and link number two in the description is xenoversemods.com slash mods and this is where I get all the mods for mod madness it's pretty much the place for xenoverse mods there's one or two maybe other websites but they're nowhere near as good as this and they're not updated as regularly and this has everything that you could possibly want. You will find annoyingly people put characters in the skills and skills and characters and stuff and they just spam their character in every category but generally it's pretty sorted pretty well so here's some of the newer ones I haven't used these ones yet but uh, they will be in the next Mod Madness. I don't have time right now so all you'll have to do is to make an account before you can download any of these and let's just go on Zbroly Fury so from here you've got this button here, please register or log in to download this mod. Once you do, usually it will download straight away, it will be a big download thing here instead of the please register. And then just save it to a folder. So with how many mods you will be installing, you will have a lot of different types. So I've just made folders to kind of help me sort these a bit better. So when the Xenoverse patcher is ripped to this level and also the Xenoverse ins is copied to this level and you've also selected your game directory and bin dbzv2.exe and you've downloaded a mod and you've got them nicely organized, what do you do then? Literally it's a very simple case of just clicking this button here, going to your mod and then pressing open. Go yes into a, into a new slot or append to existing slot and there we go install correctly. Now literally all you've got to do is load the game up and then you'll have your mod installed. But we're not done yet. Going back to Tools by Eternity, he has this pack of internal stages which basically takes every stage from the game that's not playable and makes it playable, which is very useful and I would highly recommend this one. All of this stuff is kind of really for modders and people who want to do very specific things, so if you're just generally just installing mods to play them, I wouldn't worry about that. Oh that looks good doesn't it? Very nice. Very nice. 
So I'm going to do a batch install of mods so you can see what that looks like. Open. It's going to say it's going to do it in silent mode because there's so many mods. You go OK and then it will just do its thing in the background and eventually it will say it's installed all the mods and it will be free to go. It might go it's not responding but it just means it's doing what it's supposed to. Don't worry about that. It's a common thing with programs if it's doing stuff in the foreground and it's taking a long time. There we go. All mods are installed or updated successfully. Nice. Also gives you the version and the author just in case you forget what you got installed or who buy. So let's close this and I'll show you what it looks like in the game. There's two ways to run the game. There's inside the bin where DB, v, DBZ V2 is. I think that's the one that doesn't work. You have to use the start.exe. One of them starts in the offline mode with mods enabled. The other one enables anti-cheat and goes, oh, you, you've got stuff that doesn't, you know, you've got a DLL in here that's not right. You might find when you first run the game that you actually get the error regardless, but if you try a second time, it should work. It's just when you uh, load up Steam. Okay, fine. Let's try it again. If it doesn't work, usually this screen means it's the wrong one. So maybe it is the one in the bin folder. Which would make sense, because that's where we've targeted the mod installer at. Okay, there we go. That's the one I'm expecting to see. And it should load up right away. So when you start playing the game, it will say that the game has started without EAC. Multiplayer matches will not be possible because you've got mods on. It just, it just doesn't let you go online. I think there's a way to do it, but I don't know how to do that, and I don't need to be doing that to make videos, but whatever, you know. Something to look into in future, but, you know, that's what you should see. You might find that when an update has just come out, and then you go and use your mods and put in the mod installer, it keeps resetting the cutscene. I've seen that first cutscene with few next to the uh, <laughs> next to the Crystal Raid missions so many times I don't even care to count it. But you might find that's a bug with the installer, but other than that, it, it's pretty flawless, to be honest. So, here we go, let's go to the end. There we go, Crash Bandicoot, very nice. There we go, use him in a one man, as you should know who that is. Boom! I don't know why we've got two copies of Fuse and Masu Half Corrupted, Demigra, and Final Form Mirror, but it's just a quirk of the installer, so don't worry. That's not that it's messed anything up, it's just they come up twice. Now with stages, it used to be that all of the normal stages would be on the first screen and then you have to scroll across to the next screen, but it kind of just puts them all in a row now. So the last two will be your first two mods and you press R1 or whatever is your right trigger on your controller or right two or whatever, one of those, and it will show you the rest of the stages. You're not limited just to two at the end, it's the rest of them, you just got to press a button. And if you want to do thumbnails, the green screen map's amazing. If the characters appear on screen, you know that you haven't got the infinite loading screen. But if that doesn't happen, well then you know you're in for a mod that doesn't work, so don't use it next time. And there we go, Crash Bandicoot! Isn't everyone happy? Bonk! Bonk! Boosh! Nice. So, that's been how to install mods on Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. I'm going to enjoy my holiday and I'll be coming back later on. Or maybe I'm already back. Maybe you're watching this in the future. Hello! But regardless, if you're in the present or the future, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all the next time on the next exciting episode of Axonius Rex.